it's good, but it's sad. I've been getting rid of it, and I've been talking about this for a while. Uh, but I had uh, a lot of energy that was stuck in, in my body. Um, I still do. But through a series of events, I've been slowly but surely exercising it from my body. I mean, it's been a months and months and months long process and involved a nervous breakthrough. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> and it's just energies, energy bodies coming out of my body and just stuff. There's just stuff. What I believe it is, is uh, all some scars that I've ever stored. And there were a lot of them. <laughs> there are a lot of them still. But I've gotten rid of a lot of them. And there's so much more room inside. I know that sounds weird. If anybody out there has had a retainer when they were younger, you know, and you had it in all day and then you take it out, you know that feeling at the top of the roof of your mouth? That's like how my whole body feels. <laughs> Not my whole body, but the places, especially the roof of my mouth when I get rid of some of, the, some of the energy that's there. But right now, most of the energy that's left is all this gunky, it's like, it's like gunky stuff that is, is on the inside of my body, look, just coating the inside of me. Um, I'm like, how the hell do I get rid of this? So I've been, I've been practicing surrender and that's been helping. You know, just, okay, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender. But the, that only got me so far. And I was laying down today. Sorry, I'm like letting something go out of my, out of my neck. <laughs> like meditating and, and letting more stuff go. When all of a sudden it occurred to me that I was, I was the one holding on to the stuff. And as soon as I realized that, the stuff that I'd been having trouble to getting to go away started lifting away from these places. I was like, oh my God, I'm the one that's keeping this here. I'm the one who's, excuse me. I'm the one that's holding this here, meaning I'm the one who can, I'm the one who can get this to go, right? But, and when I, when I first was kind of thinking about something similar, which was like, oh, I need, I need to, a few weeks ago, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to relax my entire body at once. How's that even going to happen? But that's not what it is. Um, it's recognizing that I'm holding on to this. So I've been saying this kind of incantation to myself uh, this after, this evening. I'm the one who's holding on to this. I refuse to hold on to this any longer. I choose to let it go. I choose to let go. And that's been going well. There's, there's some scars now. I really do believe that there are some scars, but that, that, that those two days, you know, and then subsequent healing, I'm still healing from it. Um, got out all the emotion at once and um there was a lot of it and it was I'm grateful 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 that it happened but it was brutal it was brutal it was brutal <laughs> I, I for like two days straight I mean if you don't know I, I whipped myself um not physically but mentally for like two days straight and in just it was it was it wasn't good that's not the point the point is that I believe that I got all the pain most of the pain from the some scars out and now I just had to rid myself of the energy and I've been doing that and every once in a while as I do it like as I let something go a thought will pop up and it's not like boom it's just like it all it, it drifts into my mind like a memory or something like that and I think like that's that energy is associated with that memory and I'm just relaxing and releasing and relaxing and releasing. But sometimes the, the memories that come up aren't, I mean, still have emotion attached to them. And mostly they're about like, like one that was difficult for me was kind of just telling myself like, you know, this, the stuff that you went through when you were younger, you didn't deserve that. You know, you didn't deserve that. And it shouldn't have happened. And you deserve to have someone who loved you, showed you love, and 
you know, you just blah, 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 blah. But just, you know, and that had me bawling for a little bit. But then just now, I, uh, I mean, I still think about Abram a lot. And it's been a year and a half. And it doesn't matter that he didn't choose to leave me. It wouldn't have been his choice. The fact is he did. <laughs> um, no matter how much I want to hold on to the idea that I was, I would, I would have been the person he wanted to marry if, if his mother weren't the person she were or is, um, you know, Abram from Egypt lived here since he was 18 citizen mom and dad left back in Cairo think that he's gonna still be he's 30 you know he was when I met him he was like 29 but like now he's like 34 like actually just the other day he turned 34 um you know and they still expected him to be like an Egyptian um after living in the states for so long but whatever we were together for four years lived together for three it was amazing it was like having a um having a sleepover with my best friend every night it was so much fun and we just we just we just really enjoyed our time together we knew it was and i think it was because we knew that it wasn't going to last forever so every minute that we were together we really really sought to enjoy each other's company and to make each other happy um and, to, and show each other how much we loved the other one and so much so that you know towards the end he he considered he you know there's a few moments where he was like yeah, I'll tell her um about us because I want to be with you and it doesn't really matter what happened but the mom is old and what's the word she's, she doesn't have unconditional love for her children they have to be happy the way she wants them to be happy or she's not going to talk to them very spiteful woman. Um, but you know, he's a great, he's a very dutiful son and he loves his mother and he feels obligated for her for a couple of different things. La la la. We didn't end up together and he got married over the summer to the woman that he broke up with to be with me. <laughs> um, after we'd been, it's a long story. Point being, I've still, I've been holding on to that. I think about the moments that we had together and wonderful thing um wonderful things that we did together it was beautiful um anyway okay so someone Eunice is saying please I need help urgently I'm suffering Eunice if if it's urgent you should call the hospital um uh, there's not really much I can do for you. I'm, I'm sorry that you're suffering. I really, I'm, I'm sorry that, because I know what it's like to suffer. I know what it's like to need help urgently. Um, but please, please call the hospital if it's an emergency. Yeah, heart depression. I know. I, I, I went through that for 10 years. Um, I'm sorry. I, I don't usually answer. I mean, I never answer the people who, um, right because I'm actually you know I'm in the middle of something and doing you know talking about whatever it is that I'm going through and answering kind of takes me completely away but I'm concerned about you um depression is awful it's it steals your life and but the thing is Eunice it's it's there's there, there's a way to be different you can be different it can be different do you have to, you can't go to the hospital but I mean like you can't go to the hospital um, I mean that like you don't have a hospital there that, that would take you I'm sorry to hear that I mean I it's I can understand I, for a very long time I was jobless I don't have money I'm lucky enough to live in Massachusetts where healthcare is free um, I, I can't go to the hospital for free they won't treat you if if you don't give them money I'm sorry I'm just very I'm, 
I wish there was something I can do. Everything should be paid. I agree with you. I mean, you shouldn't have to insure your body. It should be, you should be, you should have access to the health, the care that you need. Um, and it shouldn't be based on whether or not you have money. I agree with you 100%, but that's not the way the world is, but hopefully it will turn soon. I don't know, but Eunice, um, do you have people you can talk to? No, you're not embarrassing me. I just, I'm, I'm concerned for you, but there's, I'm, I know what it's like to feel that way. It's, it's, you lose yourself in it. And I get that. Um, there's a desperation to it. And sometimes it feels like it's just never going to end. And it's so unbearable. So I understand. It's, it, it will end though. It will. You're just going to keep believing that. One of the things that got me through my depression is, um, I just kept, kept having this thought, like, this isn't forever. This isn't forever. This isn't forever. And the other thing was like, this is just my story. This is just the way my, you know, this is my story. I'm going to get over this. I'm, so, I'm going to be, I'm going to feel better at some point. <laughs> and I just kept believing that and really that what was what got me through some of the, the harder times. Um, and, you know, the way I turned it around was um, I started journaling and really, really looking inside, um, doing some serious introspection. Um, treatments. I'm sorry. I'm I. I'm so sorry that that's the predicament you were in. Um, the thing that helped me the most was was realizing that even though my brain was telling me there was no other way to think and no other way to be, that there is a different way to react to your emotions and to react to your thoughts in such a way where you're not feeling desperate all the time. I mean, it it takes practice. It takes a lot of practice. Um, but if you can go inside yourself and reflect and think about where your problems, your, where your depression stems from, the issues that brought it on. Um, Cause you know, it's def definitely, there's a de definite genetic, physical, brainological component to it, but it generally does also get, you know, build up over a period of time. It's not like you just depressed like that. Um, but it's so, it is so hard to believe, I know, but I was there, I was there, and, um, and I'm, I got out, I got out, and I didn't, I mean, a certain part later on, I, 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 I went on drugs and, um, you know, medications and had therapy, uh, but I, I was in a period where I wasn't having that. And what I did is I sat down and I journaled and I just asked myself some really hard questions, really hard questions. And I started, the framework I used was the idea of um, Buddhism. So I would write down like, okay, like the four noble truths, right? The first one is suffering, all life is suffering, which really just means as long as you hold attachments, No, I'm sorry, I can't send you money. I'm sorry, I can't. Um, but I, my, my strong suggestion for you is to <laughs> journal and think about where your depression comes from, what the causes are, and um, start to see, have compassion for yourself. Um, so what I was talking about was, um, I was, I hope you're okay, Eunice. I really, I hope you're all right. Um, just know that 
all the way across the sea, I'm thinking of you and I'm wishing you well. Um, oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, we're done with that conversation now. So let's see, can we do that? We can do that, okay. Uh, sorry, just swipe. Uh, so what was I talking about? That's why I don't answer those things because it gets, totally throws me off. But um, so I was letting go and recognizing that the energy that was still here inside of me, I need to let go of something right now. Hang on. I'm working on right now, I'm working on just being present at all times. So I'm, I'm being mindful of my emotions and mindful of my physical situation and blah, blah, blah. Um, so I was lying down thinking, so the thing that was helping me get rid of this, this gunk that's like kind of inside of me was that I, um, I would say, I, I realized that I was holding it there. Um, okay. I realized that I was holding it there and, um, see right now I gotta be present because this is the moment that I'm living in. I'm the one that's holding it there and I refuse to hold it any longer. I choose to let it go. I've been saying that to myself over and over again today. And as I have, parts of the stuff is just, it's just, and it's not breaking off. Some of it's kind of not peeling either. It's just, it's like, it really is like sticky, sticky stuff that's coming up like that. And uh, sometimes, you know, it comes up like, you know, it kind of rolls up a little with, with this idea that I'm the one holding it there. So this was like a, I know, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but I guess I was thinking of something, the stuff that was there that I had to get rid of, but for some reason I thought I couldn't do it. <laughs> uh, and it, it is something, you know, where I do feel I have to rely on the grace of, of God and of the universe, but um, also I have to, I acknowledge my hand in it, right? Because this is, this is the thing with depression, with, with some scars, you store things and that is your choice. You don't know it at the time. So you have to have compassion for yourself, but you store things. Um, and I stored so much that I popped and, uh, but you know, now I'm in this place where I'm getting rid of all this stuff and there's so much, so much more room inside. Um, anyway, so what I was saying was that I was having, uh, I kind of feel like the mood's been, <laughs> the mood's been kind of like, <laughs> uh, maybe I should do this another time, but, um, yeah, I'm not feeling it anymore. And that's kind of the point. Uh, but just the, you know, I'm still holding on some stuff from Brahm. I just explained at the beginning of this video who that who he is, but basically it's been a it's been a while. He didn't want to leave, but we had to circumstantially break up. And I hold on to that, but I hold on to thoughts and of, about him and emotion and, me, and meeting uh, just you know moments in our life together, and um, they just they continuously pass through my head, and I I think about him very very often, and I mean it's not. I mean, sure, I'm, I miss him, but it's not, it's not really to cry about it. It's just, the, it's really fond memories. And then, you know, there's some heartbreak, but fond memories that make me smile. But I, it's too much. I, I think about him too much still. It's been a year and a half. He's married. <laughs> he had to get married. It wasn't his choice. I mean, he chose to, he had two shitty choices and he chose the less shitty one, so. Um, but he's happy. I hope he's happy. I don't know. I haven't talked to him. I've seen like one picture of him. Um, but I, I mean, really hope he's happy. The thing is that I've been holding on to him and 
as I was lying here just a minute ago, um, as I said, you know, when these things start coming up, sometimes a, a thought will cross my mind and I realize that that thought has to do with whatever it is that I'm letting go of in that moment, that particular samskara. Um, and a lot of them have to do with him. <laughs> so, uh, but these ones are in my head, like my neck, my throat, so my throat chakra, which is like your will, but also your expression, right? Like I had to hold, hold myself back. I couldn't speak and do what I, I wanted, <laughs> you know? And then in my head, I've got a lot of them that's, that are, you know, in the crown chakra and in the third eye um, that I'm getting rid of and there are a lot to do with him and they're hurting and the other ones the other ones haven't really hurt that much um, I think I squeezed the pain out of them uh, but these ones as I'm as they're coming up and I'm saying I'm the one that's holding on to this I refuse to hold on to it any longer I choose to let it go and I keep repeating this I keep repeating but when when these thoughts about him come up it's like heartbreak all over again because like I don't want to let him go I never wanted to let him go and now it's like come on <laughs> like it's not healthy it's not good for me the compassionate thing for myself would be to let him go and, it, and it'll feel better <laughs> it will but in this moment of letting him go I hope the thing is like with stuff like that when you when you have such a good time with people and you love them so much and they're gone and the last thing you have of them is the memories that you share it's easy to get really attached to those memories because it's they're not there but it's the closest thing you have right the memory of how much he loved me and how much I loved him and all the fun we had together we had so much fun together I miss him so much and I love him and I just I didn't want to let him go and I don't want to let him go right now but I have to move forward, right? Like, I can't... Oh, God, it hurts. It, like, really, really hurts. But that's okay. It's okay that it hurts. It's it's important that it does. Right? It was stored with pain. It's going to come up with pain. And I'm going to cry a bit after this. But I have to sit in the pain and not push it away. You know, I went through this when we broke up. I went through this when he left Massachusetts, <laughs> when he got engaged, and when he got married. And it, every time it feels like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm going through this, I'm letting go, but I've been holding on. I've been holding on. And while I, I want to continue holding on, because I really want him here with me, and that's the closest thing I can have. The healthy thing is to let him go. And I'm starting to realize that the choice to let him go. Like, I've been saying for a couple of years now, you know, there's... Sorry, guys. It's either that or snot. And I'm not a big fan of showing you any bodily fluids, to be honest with you. That's where I draw the line. Um, so... Except for tears, I mean, obviously. <laughs> you guys get plenty of my tears. Um, so, I've been saying for a few years now that, you know, the reason I'm doing this is because, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to make sure that I don't have snot in my nose. <laughs> um, uh, so, the reason I'm doing this is to show people who maybe feel the way I feel or have felt the way I feel, that there is a different way to react to your thoughts and your feelings. And I didn't know that for a very long time, like over a decade. 
I'm, you know, honestly, my whole life, <laughs> I just built up to the point where, anyway, I realized that there was a different way to react to your thoughts and your feelings. And I, you know, I, I used that to help me grow emotionally and looked, you know, relaxed and I, oh, I didn't flip out the way I used to. I didn't try to fix things. Um, and I sat with the emotion, but clearly I didn't let it all pass through. I closed around some of it <clears throat> and that's what's coming up now. And obviously I stored it here because I want it there, right? <laughs> um, but it, it can, oh God. I mean, the memories are still there. They'll still be there. They're not going to be at the forefront of my mind anymore. And I'm sure once, once I'm able to let this go, I'll feel much better, but right now it hurts. And I'm feeling that loss again. Not as bad as, you know, the first 20 times that I felt it. But, you know, my throat gets choked up and my heart hurts, my head, my face. Yeah, it's right here. And uh, what I'm doing is relaxing and releasing. And I know that that's just what I've been saying. And and the thing is, I didn't realize that you you could you could actually choose to let something go. I know that. I have been, you know what I mean? Like, but I don't, this is hard to, to explain. Like I've been working on letting things go for a couple of years now. You know what I mean? It's not, it was never my forte. Um, and I've been learning and I guess this is just another level of learning. Like I knew I could let go of things, but I guess I think everything got caught there. I was so blocked that there wasn't room for anything to pass through. So everything just got stuck. Um, and that's, you know, the progression of this whole energy thing that I'm, that I'm experiencing and that is beautiful and great. And that I love, I don't want to go through this again. I don't want to feel this anymore, but I have to feel it to get past it. I'm going to have to do some crying. <laughs> But the important thing is for me to allow myself to feel the feelings, right? Because I myself, I'm not my feelings. I'm not my thoughts. I am the consciousness that is observing them. My consciousness observes my body and the outside world. It's just so much easier to get caught up in your thoughts and feelings because they are right there and they get disturbed. <laughs> but I'm not those things. And if I keep that in mind and I don't get lost in this feeling of, I mean, it feels overwhelming sadness and loss, grief, but don't push it down. And the Glissinger says like, rock, relax your shoulders, relax your tummy. I got to relax my throat somehow because that's where I'm, it's sticking. It doesn't help that I'm talking, that doesn't really relax my throat, but right now some of it's coming out. Something's coming out. I don't know what it is, but something's coming out. And uh just gonna allow it to be, even though obviously I I have I haven't let it pass through me because I don't want to let it go. Uh but that is my thought in my feeling, the sadness, the grief. It's part of life. And I'm grateful for this life. Do I want to be happy all the time? I mean, part of me does, right? But if I want to, you know, we come down and we inhabit these bodies for a short amount of time. And, uh,
we don't have a very long time and well you shouldn't spend a lot of it sad and wallowing at all wallowing is bad bad don't judge yourself for it if you do it because I do it all the time um In order to feel the full range, have the full range of the human experience, you gotta feel the low vibrations, right? You gotta feel the grief and the pain. And if I can just separate myself enough from it, you know, like not squish it down, but just watch it and realize that the, 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 who I am, what I am, the consciousness is okay. Nothing's actually happening to the consciousness. The consciousness is just observing what's going on and feeling it. <laughs> the heart, I mean, not the physical heart, but the heart, your, your feelings is, a, is an energy field. Same thing with your mind and somehow it creates thoughts. You know what I mean? Obviously the brain creates thoughts, but the consciousness, you know, I just listen to Michael Singer, but um, what's happening is I'm being affected by, see now, am I intellectualizing it so I don't have to go through it again? I don't know. We'll have to see after this call, after this uh, video. Oh, just stuck my finger in my eye. That's nice. I just meant to world my eye, but I stuck my finger in it um okay uh see now I don't want to get off because I'm afraid if I lie down and I start letting go and start crying again but if I have to cry I have to cry and it's it's the full range of human experience like one of the one of the analogies that Michael Singer gives is like remember that Bose commercial where the guy's sitting in the chair and the speakers come on and like all the air is coming back like that's what some emotions are like you know sometimes it's a drizzle sometimes it's sunny sometimes it's a hurricane not that this is not that this is even the worst thing that could you know it's not the worst ever but it doesn't it's not comfortable it's just not comfortable I'm the one holding on to this. I refuse to hold on to it anymore. I choose to let it go. I'm the one who's holding on to this. I'm the one that's holding on to this. It's not just staying there. <laughs> I'm doing it to myself. This is the thing that I think is hard to realize when you're in the depths of shit because you're doing it to yourself. You're suffering for no reason. It doesn't feel that way when you're doing it at all. And chemically, it's hard to even, I mean, you, you're, it, you're in it, man. Like it's hard, it's hard, but I got myself out of it. Um, take some medications if you can, <laughs> if you're, if you're to the period that I place that I was at. Um, you know, they get to, to a point where you can't work on yourself because sometimes you're just so low that you don't even give a shit. Um, but yeah, it's hard to do things for yourself when you hate yourself. It really is. Um, so I am choosing to hold on to this. The emotion, the, the, the memory is just small things like when we used to hold hands in the car or, you know, kissing or you know, going to Walmart, walking together, eating some pizza in, in the apartment and, uh, you know, watching TV and just having so much fun together. Oh my God, we had so much fun. And I mean, I know it sounds like, okay, like I'm idealizing, but no, in the moment when we were together, we were always like, oh my God, <laughs> like we have so much fun together. That's hard to give up. Even if it's already gone. But I'm holding on to it and it's not healthy. It's not helping me. It's, 
it's not useful. It's actually hurting me. Because, I mean, it comes back up. And I, as much as I love the memories, it's awful obvious. It's, it's, it's obvious, too, that he's not here. And that I'm never going to have that again. And I don't want to make it something sad. I want to be able to put those memories in a special box. I see it as like silver and ornate and it's just the most beautiful box ever. And I put them in there and then they're here and I can go to them if I want, but they should, the whole relationship should stay there because I don't want to taint it ever. Relax and allow. Relax and allow. I'm the one holding on to this. So when I say that, I mean, like I said, like, I'm choosing this. I'm choosing to hold on to it. Sorry, there's some stuff going on here. Um, something like a energy that tried to leave and it came back in so I'm still holding <laughs> but I I'm choosing and if you choose if I ch if if it's true that I'm choosing to hold things there it's also true that I, I can just let go I can just stop holding them there it's not it's not even I have to do something I have to just not hold on to that I just have to let my hands go and let it be and feel the feelings <laughs> but when it's done it'll be over and it won't it won't last forever it won't even last like the night I hope <laughs> I'll be glad I'll be happy it will be out of my system <sighs> all right so I'm gonna go allow myself to feel this feeling cry a bit and uh, heal <laughs> so again I'm grateful for this and you can be grateful for anything guys you really can in a way by which I mean everything everything that happens in life can be used for your emotional growth no matter how terrible it is you can use it to grow spiritually you can use it to to strengthen yourself emotionally and that doesn't mean that you can't you not to feel emotions in fact the strength comes from feeling the emotions allowing yourself that's bravery allowing yourself to feel those feelings rather than stuffing them down and thinking oh i'm brave like no <laughs> you're scared <laughs> and it's true we're all scared but you know that's what this this feeling comes from too it's like i'm scared i don't want to um i'm grateful for it though Because it's not like this is the last time I'm going to feel pain and grief. And the better I can deal with it now, the more I will know that I am capable in the future and that I can do it. I've gotten through it before and I'll, I was okay and I'm okay. Nothing bad is actually happening right now. I'm just observing the emotions. So I'm going to go observe my emotions and uh, be grateful. So I want to remind you guys, as always, that you can always choose a grateful night.